Hey guys, this is going to be a vid on an introduction to impressioning. It will hopefully cover all the basics and uh, I'm hoping help people to get started on this sort of thing. We're going to look at the theory, what tools I use, uh, my own work method and I'm hoping a good result at the end of it. Um, I'm, I'm definitely no expert in this sort of thing so I'm just going to show you what I do myself and, and you can really take it from there. Um, I'm also sure there's guys out there who could offer some great tips and alternatives to what you're going to see here and I, and I very much welcome any additions really. Uh, and also there's no doubt there's tips and bits I'm going to forget to mention off the top of my head so I'm aiming at covering the points for a novice to get on the right track really. Hopefully I, I can achieve that. Uh, this is part one of a two part vid uh, just to break things up and, and not make it too long really. So, just to get a little bit organized, um, I'm going to just give you a summary now of, of what's, what's uh, part one and part two will cover. Um, the first point is uh, an important one, what is impressioning? Hopefully that's uh, nice, short and sweet. Uh, the second section will cover the tools that I use. There are a huge number of alternatives uh, to those uh, to suit all budgets. Um, I'm just going to show you what I what I use and what I'm happy with. Uh, then we're going to look at the key and preparing the blank key and then uh, marking the pin spacings and, and using a key grip uh, to actually make those uh, marks on, on the, the blank key. The second part of the vid is going to is then just moving on from that um, identifying marks on the key. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of uh, 10 times magnification uh, video footage for that so you're going to get a very clear view of the types of marks and what they look like. Uh, we're going to look at the filing method and, and the discipline that's useful to be able to uh, identify the marks. We're going to look at quite a few examples of, of positive marks on a key, um, again under magnification. We're going to look at canyoning, which is a, a common thing and can actually trap a key inside the cylinder. I'll explain more about that later. And then there's uh, some final tips and bits and uh, an open lock, and uh, which <laughs> really is what we're here for isn't it so and then really I've got a com just a quick comparison of a machine cut uh, compared to the impression key that, that I create as I say in, in both parts there's going to be plenty of uh, 10 times magnification video footage so you, you're really going to get a, a good idea of, of what we're looking for as you as you file and examine the marks so Let's get on with uh, part one of this and uh, I hope it's useful to you. So impressioning is um, using the marks left by binding key pins in a cylinder on a blank key uh, in order to file away material and produce a working key. I think that pretty much sums it up. I have no idea what the dictionary definition is of it, but it uh, yeah, sounds about right. The tools you're going to need for impressioning, um, well, as you can see here, uh, the most important tools is a very secure vise to be able to secure uh, your cylinder in. Um, I've got a clamp vise here, but of course one that's equally bolted to the table is, is just as good. I found these ball jointed vices uh, very useful. I've got this set up at an angle so you can you can see as much as you can. It's not normally how I would have it angled in order to, to impression, uh, but I was hoping it would be useful to you. So the vise, very important. Uh, another important tool is the file. Uh, this is a, a six inch um, uh, Swiss cut, uh, four cut um, pippin file. Uh, a very nice file, not cheap, 
Um, some people prefer to use uh, round files rather than pipping files. I mean, each to his own, you know, some people have their own preferences. Uh, I get along fine with this and have no reason to change. A pipping file is uh, like a teardrop shape, so it's got a sharp edge uh, on this top and then a rounded edge on this bottom. Um, I'd really recommend that if you spend the money on a good file that you keep it protected from dinks and, and scrapes and such things. I use this heat shrink tubing over the top of it uh, so it can be in a toolbox and what and it, it's fine, it's nice and protected. The next tool I guess to show you is the key grip. Um, many people use uh, ball grips. Uh, once I bought myself a key grip, I never wanted to go back to, to, to mold grips. They do the job. Uh, mold grips in particular, if you take a, the front section of the, the jaws away, so you've got more of a flat surface inside the jaws, uh, they can be quite useful. Uh, yeah, but once I had a key grip, I found it a lot more, you get a lot more torque on the key blank. And... Uh, you have a, a lot more better appreciation of how much force you're using. I find them very useful to begin. They're not cheap. Uh, so this I have a use for in my impressioning uh, work routine. I, I can show you that later. Uh, another important tool is light and magnification. This, many people use a table mounted uh, magnification with a, a round uh, fluorescent tube in because light comes out all directions onto the key blank as you're examining it under the magnification. I use one of these um, because it's more portable. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very nice tool. It has some limitations because the light is only coming from one direction. Um, but I'll show you a way that I use it and uh, I can be successful with it. This is a uh, 10 times magnification. Many people don't find uh, they need that much. I don't think you can have too much. Uh, my eyes are in their 40s, so uh, they prefer <laughs> some, some assistance. I also wear reading glasses. Uh, but uh, I find this very useful. As I say, many people don't need 10, uh, 10 times magnification. Uh, many people spend a lot less on uh, a magnifier as well. Um, what else do we have? Mark pen for marking the spence, a, a permanent fine mark pen for marking the, spence, the spaces on the key blade. Uh, I'll show you that as well. Uh, some sandpaper and a wood block for preparing the key blank. Uh, a blank key, of course and uh, a toothbrush for cleaning uh, brass dust from uh, the key blank. Now, I highly recommend that you impression with brass blanks. Um, steel blanks, are, they are very difficult to impression and, uh, without experience uh, because um, most key pins in locks are brass pins, so you have a soft metal being brass, uh, trying to impression to a harder metal like steel and it's very difficult to see the marks. I won't cover this in this introductory video um, but brass blanks will show you much more distinctly the marks that you're after. Uh, the less wear on your file and the much easier to get familiar with what's going on. Uh, so yeah I think I've got, I've been through the tools Lock vice blank to brush files. Yeah, okay. So I think we're good to go. Yeah, let's just rearrange this so I'm in a better position and uh, let's, let's do it. First thing you need to do is prepare the blank key. Of course, you're going to be looking under this under magnification so. Normal, nor to your normal eye, this top of the blade of the key uh, looks very smooth, but under magnification you can see that that is something very different. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare it so that the surface is much smoother and even. Um, so you're able to distinguish the marks left by the key pins on the top of the blade of the blank. So let's just do that. And here's the wood block and some sandpaper. I use this, you can use equally use a file. This is 240 grit sandpaper. Again, you can use a different grit, no problem. And uh, just like that. So let's have a look at the difference between a uh, key blank before it's prepared and uh, now that I've sanded it to make it very nice and smooth. So this is under 10 times magnification and you can see the difference between a prepared blank on the bottom and an unprepared one. It's a huge difference and a much cleaner finish. So the next step is to mark the spacings uh, on key blank the spacings between the pins in the lock this is a five pin abus uh, cylinder uh, so we're going to mark it on they're going to establish some marks on the top of the key blade then we're going to put some lines down the key blade so so as you file you can keep on the spacings very well this is the most important thing it's so easy just to wander off so you're slightly before the spacing or you're slightly after the spacing as you file down and uh, well you're completely screwed because uh, the spacing's wrong the depths may be right but the spacings are wrong so that's that's no use to you whatsoever so you've got to really keep very well to those spacings of the pins as you file so we're going to insert the lock now first I really highly recommend that you keep a good discipline as far as how you uh, put torque onto this key blank as i say it's it's a brass blank so it's it, it, it's going to bend and break very easily and you will bend and break uh, a lot of key blanks as you begin uh, before you get used to how much pressure that you actually need to put on a key blank in order to establish the marks it'll usually break around here just before the shoulder and uh, so what we need to do is give it some turning torque in order to establish those binding pins inside the plug and then we want to go up and down movement yeah in order to uh, put those marks onto the edge of the key blade from the key pins don't go side to side don't it's, it's no use it's gonna you're really gonna fracture the blade uh, the, the the blade of the key um, also you'll find that as you go along because you're putting high torque on that you'll the, the, the blade will get weaker as you uh, as you go through the process so you know you can do all that work and uh, you're near the end and then pop your, your key breaks and then you have to start again I'll show you a, a little trick to, to help you out in that case in a little while so so we're gonna have some turning torque and some up and down hope that this doesn't shake my camera too much on the table so so now we're going to examine this underneath the magnification and you can see the spacing marks that uh, that have been established so now i use i use this vertically over the key blade yeah uh, I find this gives me the, the best uh, distribu distribution of light in order to see the marks. So let's have a look at that. Again, under, so under 10 times magnification again, very clearly. 1, 2, 3, 4, and spacing of five, all very distinct on the prepared surface of the key blank. So now we're going to mark that on the key blade as we go down. You can, 
if you get the light right you can sometimes see them with your your, your, your naked eye uh, but if not then you can just use the magnification just to get a good idea and you can mark that spacing so now you can see uh, the spacings marked and this is extremely important to stick to as you file down yeah so now you can take the file and just make the first marks uh, on these spacings yeah you want to file a, uh, a push on the push stroke never on the pull pull stroke and just on those spacing marks just take away some of the material So now you have those spaces marked and they're ready to receive marks from the key pins. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Compare the spacing lines I've made with the cuts I've filed and how clean those are, ready to be marked by the key pins. So that takes care of part one. Uh, part two will go into a lot more detail of the process and the result. I hope you find uh, both parts useful and uh, take care. Bye now.